Hello riding people. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Just gonna do a little far call on my Ducati Street Fighter and put some bar risers on it. Put some on the old uh, R1250 GSA there and uh, I really like them over distance. And I get on okay with these standard Street Fighter bars but they are a little bit low and my wrists are, are full of nuts and bolts. So I uh, thought I'd fit some rocks risers. Just for reference, these are the ones I have on my GSA, and they are about a, uh, a kind of one and a half to two inch lift and a one inch back. So they are called bar back risers. But these risers here are pivot risers. Bar back risers would not work on the Ducati because if I show you, as you can see, these clamps are both offset, so they're not straight and they're actually angled as well. So the higher at the back, the lower at the front. And that means you can't just put in a regular riser. You can't put back, uh, you can't put in bar risers, bar back risers like on the GSA for instance. You're going to need something that pivots. So instead of something that fits in between these two clamps, you're going to need to replace it with something that basically replaces the bar here and has its own clamp and that's what a pivot riser does. So with these pivot risers you have this bar here that effectively becomes your handlebar and that slots into that handlebar piece and then this part which would normally be above and below um, or would rather be in between and above the standard handlebar becomes your replacement and they pivot so you put them in and they can move that way and that way quite nicely and these are a two inch lift uh, pivoting riser for one and one eighth bars which is the standard uh, handlebar width I uh, got these from Revzilla I'm a bit disappointed in all the many many items from Revzilla me very happy but you can see these ones are quite scratched and uh, you can see here and here and um, the uh, packaging that came in was disgusting it was kind of folded in half it had clearly been rewrapped it had been had new plastic on it and had been stapled together badly and uh, these bolts are loose and uh, clearly somebody's had them on their bike they don't fit or they don't like them and they sent them back but rather than send them back for a replacement and wait even longer I've decided I'll try and fit them and uh, these little anomalies if necessary I'll just color in with a, a black sharpie and uh, hopefully uh, they won't be too noticeable but a bit disappointed there but uh, hopefully uh, they'll go, go on okay and I'll be quite happy with the end result now uh, all these towels and stuff are here because you want a nice big soft towel for your paintwork, want to protect that. Um, so easy to, to damage the bodywork. And again, this is a, a thick chamois, which I'm going to double up and layer over the TFT clocks because we don't want those scratched or damaged either. This is just a, a little kitchen hexagonal mat thing. And I find it's really useful to put nuts and bolts and washers on because they don't roll off, don't go anywhere. And... Uh, so that's what I'll be using, and this is uh, hopefully a fairly quick and easy job. So really all you need for this job is your trusty set of Allen keys, and today we're going to need the uh, the 6mm. That's going to deal with these uh, nuts on top, and they're the same size as the standard clamp nuts on the Ducati. So there we have the Street Fighter, all nicely protected with this thick towel and uh, the chamois protecting the TFT. And then we just gotta unscrew these bolts with six mil and whip them off. Okay, so the standard uh, bolts and top clamp have come off with minimal effort. And that's what the bottom of the clamps look like with the tops off. As you can see, they're actually angled, which is a problem if you just wanna put regular bar back risers in or regular lifted visor, uh, risers. And I've lent the handlebars forward just so we can put the new clamps in and see how they fit. Okay, so the first thing to do is uh, take this clamp apart. And this is going to fit into the OEM clamp 
all the OEM clamp is going to clamp that down on the bike and you'll see what that looks like in a second. So this is what it looks like with the basic clamp in situ. You could of course leave both top clamps on, just loosen them off and then fit this. Uh, but I just wanted to remove it to show you uh, exactly what it looks like. And when fitting, you want to hold this in flush with the bar and then bolt up the uh, each side just enough so that it's snug. You have to use a fair bit of force to move it, but you can move it because we want to make sure we mount the bars first before locking everything up. So I'm going to put the other side on and we'll try and get these bars on, clamp it up if we can, see what it looks like. Okay, so that's where the bars just rested on top. And you can see this uh, factory position, which will help you with your alignment once you go to clamp it up a bit. So let's put the top clamps on, then we can rotate the whole clamp to get it hopefully in a nice position. Okay, so I've got them on the bike and I've got them done up snug, but not tight. And I've had to sit on the bike to make sure that they sit at the right height and angle that I want them at. And overall they look excellent. I'm just going to nip them up slightly more, then check by turning the handbars fully left and fully right that I have enough cable length. I'm not, none of the cables are getting too tight. And then we'll tighten it up and test it. Okay, the cables are very important that you don't pinch or break them so I've just checked the cables without turning the bars and these three sit in here very very tightly and this uh, little clutch cable here is incredibly tight even uh, you know standard so I've just taken that out of the clamping rubber housing here and also on this side these four cables here I've taken these two out and what I'll do is if I've got sufficient room now to turn the bars I'll simply put a little black cable tie on, lower down just to tidy those up, and it won't look, uh, you know, much worse than stock, I don't think. Okay, so quick lessons learned. That, uh, this is why I put uh, a message in the, one of the title overlays at the start of this video to watch the whole video through. I had to take it all apart again because what I realised is with this clamp in situ, there isn't sufficient room to get your Allen key in there and do up this bottom clamp. So what you have to do is loosen off the front ones and do the rear ones up fully tight or perhaps just leave them as standard and undo the front ones sufficient to slide these in. And then of course, once you get them in situ and you tighten up the front ones, they're gonna be fine because these rear ones are already clamped up uh, to the maximum that they can be. Uh, always refer to the torque settings and use the torque wrench when uh, clamping up anything like this for safety reasons. A lot of people just do uh, their nuts and bolts fairly tight and uh, for things that are safety critical like this they do them F type um, so you can work out what that means um, but if uh, you don't have a torque wrench basically just do them up as tight as you can uh, whilst ensuring you don't strip any threads. There she is. So after clamping the bars up for the second time, I realised that these uh, these stretchy rubbers are sufficient to hold these cables. They are very, very tight on the clutch, very tight, and very tight over here on the brake as well. And so you can just see that. So you want to make sure that these cables are as far up to the clamp as you can get them to give as much free play here as you can. But when I turn the bars fully left and fully right, it's okay. It doesn't stretch them anymore. So, you know, you need to try that with, uh, with the bars at full lock, either direction, um, before making sure everything's okay to test ride. Now I found that uh, for me personally, uh, it's pretty much a straight up riser. I didn't need to lean it back towards me any. I quite like the fairly stock stretch, but I wanted a higher riser. But I can change them in time. Uh, I've just 
test them out, see how they feel. At least you have the uh, ability to move them. Now, my friend has some low, low pro, as they call them, one and three quarter rocks risers, pivot risers like these. I wasn't sure the two inches were gonna fit, but they do fit. It is tight, and I would definitely say you have zero room to move anything higher than a two inch. And in fact, if you pivot them back towards you, you can see mine are pretty much directly upright, but if you pivot back towards you, you'll definitely need to free up these cables and just cable tie them lower down. I think you'll have enough room, but uh, you'll need to do that before you fit the bars, just so that you don't overstretch and damage any of these cables potentially. So there we go. Another job far called on the 2021 Ducati Street Fighter V4S. Okay, so in another comedy moment, I realized that uh, although the bars are pretty perfect where they are, can't see the clocks that well. Can't see the bottom kind of third. So I will have to angle them a little bit towards me. So I've already taken off the rubber securing straps off the cables at the front of the bike. Now I'm gonna angle the, uh, the pivot risers back a bit. And this is the beauty of the pivot risers. You do have that adjustment. Okay, so I put the uh, rubber straps back on at the tightest point after adjusting uh, the handlebars. Turn the bars left and right, it's not creating any pinching or problems stretching the cables. Uh, it's actually at a better angle now. Um, so actually you can see it's actually kind of pivoted back. So I'd say it's a two inch rise and about half an inch back to uh, maybe an inch. And that's exactly what they are, a two inch riser with a, uh, a one inch back if you need it for one and one eighth bars. Uh, only thing to do now is adjust my bar end mirrors. I'll spare you the torture of uh, watching me do that. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a very useful rise, and I'm sure it'll be much more comfortable on longer days in the saddle. And I don't think it looks too bad. I don't think it's, uh, you know, destroyed the profile of the bike too much. And uh, it will give me greater comfort. And now, when I look over, the bars I can actually see the clocks as well which is always a bonus all right so for now hope you've enjoyed this video if you're new to my channel please subscribe like share all that good stuff and uh, for my regulars as always ride often ride carefully ride on mm -hmm.